Okay, in this video we're going to be uh, going on with our day two of material um, on unit seven, or unit six actually, sorry, that's similarity. Today we're going to be talking about ratios and similar polygons and similar shapes, okay? So first of all, um, remember we're dealing with ratios, which means we're going to be writing fractions. And what that means, um, how we can use fractions, we first have to know what similar means, what similarity means. And similarity means that we have two figures that have the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. So we have a scaled up or scaled down version of a different shape. And the notation that we use, the way that we write that something is similar, is we use a single squiggly line by itself. Okay? So you have shape one and shape two here, or shape one versus shape three. And what I can tell you is that shape one and shape two are similar because they look the same. In fact, if I measured the angles, I would find that these two angles would be identical to each other. I would find that these two angles here would be identical to each other, and these two angles over here in the bottom right corner would be identical to each other. We call those sets corresponding pairs of angles, so like, kind of like we do with parallel lines, okay? That these two correspond to each other, these two correspond, these two correspond. All the angles are the same. The only difference is that this is a scaled up, a bigger version of shape one. Now shape one and shape three, not the same, right? Because we can see here that they don't even look the same. This one looks like a right triangle, and that looks like maybe like an isosceles triangle. Yeah, these aren't the same shape, so here's what we can write. We can write that triangle one is similar to triangle two, and so we can say it using this. And let me see if I can zoom in a little bit, okay? Notice how it's written. There's the notation. Triangle one is similar to, that's what that little single squiggly stands for, okay? It's similar to triangle two. Or if we want to say that two shapes are not similar, all we do is we put a slash through the middle of that squiggly, okay? They're not similar, right? That little slash means not. So if you understand what similarity means, let's go through and let's just do a few things, basic things with this, okay? We have similar polygons. So let's say, let's define what similar polygons are first. Let me adjust my camera here. Two polygons are similar if and only if these requirements are met. Number one, first requirement, the corresponding angles have to be congruent. So in this shape, what we're going to say is these two are congruent if the first requirement is A and E are the same, B and F are the same, C and G are the same, D and H are the same. All four angles are congruent. Their corresponding angles are congruent. So, check one, right? There's the first requirement. The second requirement, okay, because there are two, the second requirement is the corresponding sides are not congruent, but they are proportional. And that's the main word here. The word's proportional, okay? So what you'll notice if I compare the two sides, if I go from the side from A to B, it's six, this is 12, it's twice as big. 5.4, double it, 10.8. 4, 8, double. 5, 10, double. Interesting, right? Okay, so they're proportional. Now, do you remember doing proportions in the last lesson? I hope you do, because that's where we said, hey, listen, if I have two things, ratios, that I set equal to each other, then I can do some cross-multiplication to solve for something within that ratio, within that proportion. This is what it means, okay? That's a proportion, right? So the sides are proportional. Here are the statements we can write. I can encourage you. I'm not going to wait for you to write all these down right now. So I want you to pause. I just want you to copy these two shapes into your notes, and I want you to write down these statements. Here are the four statements. Requirement one, the four angles are congruent, right? You see the congruent sign show up. And the other thing is, requirement two is this bottom set down here that says the sides are proportional. Side AB to side EF, it's a one to two ratio. In other words, EF is twice as long as AB. We could also say, th say the same thing going from B to C to F to G, CD to GH, D, A, T, H, E. The ones in the bottom are twice as long as the ones on the top. And notice how they're corresponding to their sides, right? The sides that match up from each one. The 10 corresponds to the 5, the 8 to the 4, and so on. Okay? So pause, write down. When you're ready to go on, click. So, for example, things you're going to be asked to do. Let's identify some pairs of corresponding angles and sides. I think it's easier to start with the angles first when you've got a situation like this. Angle Q, what's its corresponding angle? 
So be careful here. It's not necessarily the one on the bottom left. We're looking for the two angle markings, which in this case would be angle Y, right? So angle Q and angle Y correspond to each other. Angle R is the one with a single arc marking. That would be angle Z on the other triangle. And angle S doesn't have a marking at all, but obviously if these add up to 180 degrees, this one here, I could put three tick marks if I want to. It's going to correspond to the X on the other one. Right? So a statement that I could write then, so far the first requirement is met. I guess I'm not ready to write a similarity statement to say that these two shapes are similar. Here's the other piece of this. I have to say that the sides are corresponding, right? So the three sides that I have are RS, RQ, and SQ. RS, which is 13.5, okay, RS needs to correspond R to S is the same thing as Z to X. Q to R is the same thing as Y to Z. You see why it's easier to start with the angles, right? SQ is the same thing as X to Y. In order to make sure that these two shapes, to make sure that the two shapes are similar, I have to check two requirements. Number one, are the angles congruent? Yes, we know that because I have three of the same angle, right? The angles are congruent. Are the corresponding sides proportional? So if I check R to S, that's checking it against Z to X. R to S is a 13.5 in length. Z to X is 9 in length, okay? So now I just get out my calculator here, and I do 13.5 over 9. I'm going to see if that reduces. Okay, that's 1.5. That's a 3 to 2 ratio. Okay. I'm going to check the same thing with the other two. How about RS, excuse me, I already did that one. How about QR to YZ? Okay, well, Q over R. Q to R, excuse me, is 18 in length, and YZ is 12 in length. 18 over 12, I type that in my calculator, it reduces to 3 over 2 as well. So that's good. Let's check the last one, S to Q. If I compare that to XY, S to Q is 9, X to Y is, excuse me, is 6. And if I put 9 over 6 on my calculator, that's 3 halves. All the sides have the same proportion. Therefore, these two shapes are similar. And here's what I can say. The similarity statement is this. Triangle R, S, Q is proportional to, and order matters here, or R corresponds to Z. So if I write R first, I need to write Z first. If I write S second, I need to write X first second. If I write Q third, that means Y needs to go third. There's a similarity statement that I have. It's a one to two proportion, or three to two proportion. This thing is one and a half times as long on each side. Okay, that's enough for this video. Okay, so in the next few examples, uh, that, that's good enough for this. I mean, in the next video, I'll start talking about some similarity ratios, and we'll do a few examples of similar. You know what? Now, I can do this in less than a minute. Ready? Here we go. Similarity ratios, the ratio of the lengths, you saw me doing it, 3 to 2 ratio over there, okay? If I have the ratio here, notice the two ways that I can state it, and I encourage you to pause the video and write these down. If I'm going to compare the little shape to the big shape, that means I'm going to have a ratio that's less than 1, right? A 3 to 6, which will be reduced to 1 half, a 2 to 1 ratio. But if I'm going to compare the big shape to the little shape, then I'm going to expect a ratio bigger than 1. Both of these are absolutely correct. That's the idea here, okay? The ratio of little to big is one half, but the ratio of big to little is two to one, a two to one relationship, okay? So you can write it either way. You just have to specify what you're talking about, okay? And you have to read the questions. When questions ask you, you have to make sure you're doing little to big or big to little. The other thing then, so if we want to go through and do an example, we already know that these are, are similar, right? Oh, look, how about that? The last example is the one we already did. So. You know on this one, if you go back a couple of slides, that the ratio is a 3 to 2 ratio. 
So four, two to three, depending on if you're going big to little or little to big. All right, now that makes sense. I've got uh, two more videos here for you where I'm going to work out a couple examples. We're going to take this a step further, but that's really the main thing. Okay, understand the similar ratio, understand how to write the similarity sign, and how to find out whether they're similar. There's two requirements. Make sure you know those two requirements, proportional sides, congruent angles.